everyone, welcome to Kim Yin Yoga. I'm Kim, and today we have an advanced Yin Yoga practice. We're going to begin in a simple warm up. Let's go ahead and place your left foot in your heel to the center, right to follow, and Hands on the knees, let's just find a deep breath in. Exhale, exhale it out, and we're just going to roll it around in this wonderful little coffee grinder move to warm up the side bodies. Reverse the circle. Today's practice is advanced in the sense, only in the sense that we're going to hold the poses a little bit longer and the video itself will be a bit longer. Rolling it around. Okay, in these circles. <clears throat> Shorten up your Sukhasana, palms upward, and we're doing the Chinese yoga move that is very circular. <clears throat> We're going in roundy rounds. I hope my voice is going to last through the whole video. <sighs> it will. I intend that it will. All right. We're going to go into Jana Susasana, so half butterfly, half wide-legged stance because we're going to wake up that side body first. You might want to just kind of lean, lean it on over. Both sits bones are flat into the mat. We're not lifting that left sits bone up. And I'm coming up over and stretching mainly all from the sacrum up into those lower floating ribs and find my toe and just a beautiful side body bend. We'll be here for three long slow deep breaths and this is what warms us up for Janusha's asana. One more deep breath in really Bring yourself into the stretch. And as you exhale it out, up we come. And over for Janusha Sasana. So the uh, left leg is like as if in tree pose. The foot is flush into the right thigh. I'm going to find length through my lower back, upper body, and I'm just kind of head on down, head on down to find where I start to feel an edge and you can play with pulling your femur kind of deeper into the socket and as you get down, go ahead and drop nose to knee. We'll be here about three minutes. And you want to just melt yourself into the pose, relaxing everything, relaxing your feet, your hands. Relax those hamstrings, <laughs> which are getting challenged. This is a pose that I was taught if you can only do one yoga pose a day, do this one. And I know that might be true of many others, but this is the one that I always remember as being so important. Janu Sasana.
And as we melt into this pose, remember, you want the strong sensation. So it's not restorative yoga. Yin is not implying restorative, as in it's just resting, no activation. It's also not rolfing. It's not meant to be painful, like the jump out of your skin pain that you have to get away from. It's somewhere in between. Where we feel a strong edge and hold it in stillness. Three more long, slow, deep breaths here. And as we exhale out that third breath, come up slowly, gingerly, and we'll go to the other side, which is our counter pose. Because this leg gets to fold up now, which is going very happy about. <laughs> All right, with the side body stretch, we're just going to roll it on over. You might want to um, hold your right foot as you stretch on down. You might want to dial it over this way. A little extra support. And let's just have three long, slow, deep breaths here. Stretch it on down. Exhale, exhale it out, and turn over towards the left foot. Again, we're in tree pose, so I've got the flat of my foot pressed into my left thigh. So it's like a seated tree. And I'm lengthening up through the spine. I'm really identifying my sits bones on the mat. Pulling my femur into the socket, and forward we go. You'll find probably each side's different, and we don't measure them against each other. We just find our edge, wherever that edge may be, then drop nose to knee. Once you get here, at first all you can feel is the screaming edge, <laughs> which is not pain that you have to jump away from, but it's strong sensation. Now, instead of trying to get away from it, melt into it. Relax your feet. Relax your legs, butt, thighs, knees, calves.
And relax your arms, your upper back, scapulas. Relax the skin of your face and greet that edge. Melt into the edge. Be the edge. Check your hips, relax them deeper. Let's take three more long, slow, deep breaths. And as I exhale out the third breath, I'm walking it right back up and we're going to flip it on over for a little child's pose. And the main thing that we're doing here is just giving the legs a chance to fold up, <laughs> which they like. Forehead pressing into the mat. Three long, slow, deep breaths here. As I exhale out the third breath, I'm planting my hands, ready to launch, not really launching, slowly moving up and we're just going to go into a nice foot stretch, pranam, and some circular cat cows. And these circle cat cows are just going to give us a chance to work out those hips that have been stretched, activated. Let's do a few of these. Come back to neutral. Tops of the feet down onto the mat, cat cow. My elbow creases are pointing towards each other. I'm pulling the mat together, nose up, deep breath in. Exhale, exhale it out into Halloween Cat. Deep breath in, cow. Let's exhale it out here. Another deep breath in. Sits bones stretching left to right. Exhale it out. Deep breath in. Exhale down to cow. Cat. Cat. It's like I'm like cats and cats mixed up. And down to cat. Stretch it out. Deep breath in. Stay here. Exhale it out. Stretch. Deep breath in. Back to neutral. Walking the hands a wee bit forward, turning the toes under, Adho Mukha, down face dog. A couple little pedals. It's are gonna feel really nice on the hamstrings. And then tippy toes. Oh, my toes cracked. <laughs> tippy toe up. 
and lower your heels to the degree that they will. Dialing your hands externally, rotating the shoulders, hips internally rotating, sits bones left to right. Relax the head and Automuka Down Face Dog will be here about three minutes. If at any point in any of these postures you have had enough, <laughs> you get too much of a shake or the edge, you've got to get away from it, just please come down into child's pose and rest. Over time, as you expand your home practice, you'll be able to hold the poses longer and longer. In these yin yoga poses, if you close your eyes, the outer world recedes and your inner world of creativity, imagination, and connection to the body opens up. This is the perfect time and place for ujjayi breath. That soft ocean sound in the back of the throat created by a slight constriction. Make this a meditation. Three more long, slow, deep breaths. And as you exhale out the third breath, come on down to the knees and feet flat, arms draping behind you, let them rest. Forehead to mat. Now just notice how deep and still and quiet your child's pose is. One more deep breath in. As you exhale it out, come on forward to Sphinx. (sighs) 
I've got my hands and fingers wide across the mat and it's as if I'm tearing the mat in half to get myself situated. My elbows strong, my forearms strong into the mat. And once I have that, I let everything go. Relax the butt. That's the first thing you gotta relax here. <laughs> For me, relax the legs. The heels are just gonna wanna flop out to the sides. Just let your bones hold you up. And as we allow the slight back bend and opening of the upper body, the front body, note that if you have any sensitivity or feeling of compression in the lower spine, that you can counter that by tilting your pubic bone down towards the mat. So you don't have to be in this kind of hyperextended position if it's hurting your back. So it all depends on where your back is today. I want you to tune in there and make some choices about your the angle of your pelvis. <laughs> While we engage in this front body opener and back bend. Let's go ahead and give the neck something to ease any tension. Looking to the left and further to the left and further to the left. You should be seeing your feet by now. <laughs> right around. Deep breath in. And exhale all the way to the right, nice and slow, right around. You're going to notice that your range of motion, well, I notice, <laughs> my range of motion is different on each side. And that just says there's more work to go for the neck. further and further. Deep breath in. Bring it right on back to center. Deep breath in. Push up to seal. If that still feels okay on your back. If that's too much on your back, you can stay in Sphinx or again tuck your, pal your pubic bone uh, tilted a bit to take that rainbow arch out of your back a little bit, if that feels like compression. Relax the feet, relax the legs, relax the butt. Allow for deep belly breaths with this wonderful front body opener. Three more long, slow, deep breaths in from here or from Sphinx. And as I exhale out the third breath, I'm going to roll over onto my left hip and push on up into Gomakasana. We're going to do full Gomakasana, arms and legs. So left leg down, right leg over the top into cow face legs. Now um, you may find this difficult if you do. Go ahead and just you're going to straighten that uh, bottom leg. 
So you've got the option, full Gomakasana legs or half. Lace your fingers if you're in full, and you can do this in, no you can't. <laughs> you're not going to uh, You can do, lace both fingers if you're in full Gomakasana. And press it on up. I'm pushing the heel of my hands into Bubbling Well, Bubbling Spring, that uh, beautiful acupressure point at the center of the bottom of the toe pad. Mm. All, all the toe pads, the front foot toe pad. Oh, that feels amazing. <sighs> all right, and into the Gomakasana arms, we are going to raise them out to the side. Right arm goes up and behind. Left arm comes around. I'll just show you. You guys know this already. I'm pretty darn sure. But from the back, it's going to look like this. And you're going to grab those fingers in a little hatch. If you're super flexible, you'll be able to grab your wrists, which I don't quite make that. Uh, if you have very broad shoulders and you've been working out and surfing and you've got a lot of flesh there and not as much flexibility, you grab a sarong and uh, twist it and hold it uh, to create the edge, to create the tension <clears throat> that's going to allow for this beautiful shoulder I'm coming back around experience. So, two birds, one position. <laughs> We're getting our shoulders, upper body, and of course the hips are getting a beautiful rotation. So we'll be here for a couple minutes. And ideally, you, again, you find your edge. And at first, the experience of edge is, oh, I've got to get away from here. And I invite you to meet it, to surrender to it, to melt into it, to become one with your edge. If you close the eyes, the outer world diminishes and the inner world wakes up. This is a beautiful posture for taking a break from the computer if you're a writer or creator of any kind step away from the canvas, metaphorical or literal, and gomakasana. It's grounding, it's centering, and as you close your eyes and allow, the imagination wells up. If you're not ready to close your eyes or there's things going on around you that you feel you need to stay aware of, just find a soft drishti, a soft focus a few feet in front of you. And let everything go. Check into your thighs, buttocks, knees, legs, feet. Check into your upper back body, shoulders, the head, the neck, the skin of the face. Relax it all. Three long, slow, deep breaths from here.
And as we exhale out that third breath, let go of your clasp of the sarong of whatever's going slowly and arms straight up overhead, rotate those thumbs back behind you, fingers forward, rotate the scapulas and rain it down. To swap legs, I'm going to lean back, get the pressure off your pelvis, so I'm tipping right back and switching over. I might be switching over uh, with a straight foot for half Gumakasana, or I might be going into the opposite with the whole. If that makes sense. I'm lacing my feet, if you're in the full form pressing a lift right up off of my butt, my sits bones, and I'm pressing into bubbling spring, bubbling well, that beautiful kidney meridian point. As I settle back down, arms out to the side, and this time the left hand comes up behind, right hand scooches to meet it, and I've got a bobby pin in the back of my head that just stabbed me. Okay, we're okay now. There's a little extra acupuncture going on. We just have some deep breaths here. We'll be here a couple minutes as we're on the other side. Again, this is just a wonderful posture for taking a break from anything that you're doing that's repetitive and you need to refresh the mind, stimulate the body and reboot the mind. Go ahead and find your drishti or close your eyes. And as you do, check into those little micro tensions that you might be holding in your calves, in your ankles or feet. Release the hips, the thighs, the buttocks. This is where we want to let everything go. Breathing into the belly. Either a soft gaze or eyes closed. and relaxation. Allow for the draining away of adrenaline and replaced by all those happy brain messengers which yin yoga floods us with. Relax the skin of the face. Relax the scalp, the brows. Let everything go. Let 
Let's take three long, slow, deep breaths. And as you exhale out the third breath, slowly drop maybe chin to chest <laughs> <laughs> and just let yourself unravel, hands up over the head, lace the fingers, stretch them straight, break free, rain down. And from here, leaning back off the, off the sits bones, we're going on to flat back, and into Sleeping Possum, legs up the imaginary wall. I'm just getting my gear straight here. <laughs> legs up the imaginary wall. Into my possum. Point, point, point everything up, pushing the sacrum down into the mat, pushing the feet in the opposite direction, up, 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 fingers up, 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 deep breath in, and exhale, let it go. My wrists are flopping forward, my shoulders are flush against the mat, there's no holding up, they're just flush against the mat. I've got my zombie possum hands. I can bend my knees and bring my, them forward a little bit to keep my sacrum flush against the mat. How small my back is being fully supported. My eyes are closed. <laughs> and I am melting, allowing the lymphatics to drain the other way, allowing the blood flow to move freely without any of those kinks and corners of gomogasana. <laughs> and while I'm laying here, I'm going to press the back of my head into the mat with a kind of isometric move because, yeah, I'm not moving that floor <laughs> with my head. And I'm just going to slowly keep up the pressure of pressing and rolling my neck from side to side. And just slowly bringing relief to those last few vertebrae of the spine, or first few, depending on where we start the count. <laughs> I guess first, <laughs> cervical spine is meant to come first. We'll just have three more long, slow, deep breaths here. There's no tension anywhere. And as I exhale out the third breath, I'm bringing my knees down into I'm bringing them into my elbow creases. You can do this out here in your hands or into the elbow creases. I go ahead and grab a hold of my toes with my toes. Temple your fingertips. Bring the forehead up so it's kind of a bound hedgehog. And I'm manchakchia, pressing my knees into my elbow creases. My elbow creases are holding everything in. It's an isometric move. I am spreading my sits bones left to right and pressing my sacrum into the mat. Deep breath here. 
And then exhaling, exhaling it all out. Big old full body stretch. Rainbow arch the back. And then flatten the back on the exhale. Inhale, arch the back. Flatten the back. And one more time. We're going to arch the back. Deep breath in. And back to neutral. I'm bringing my hands down to my sides. Getting situated on the mat. Wigglasana. You know this one. The hips are shimmying side to side. The feet are fishtailing, the hands are loose, the shoulders are gyrating, the epicenter is the, the coccyx, really, the sacrum, but right down on the tailbone is kind of the motor of this shake. Deep breath in. And then exhale, exhale it out. Allow your breath to deepen. Allow your body to relax. If your lower back would prefer, you can bring your feet to the wide edge of the mat and let the knees fall together. Your arms might be happy just out at the sides with the palms up in receiving mode. Or you might want to reach them towards the sky and allow them to gently crisscross over your chest. Pose of the corpse. Where we are using virtually no energy. to hold us in this posture. Close your eyes. Go in. This is the perfect time to do a body scan where we start at the head, work our way down, neck, shoulders, arms, hands, chest and upper body, heart, stomach, intestines, lower back, kidneys, the bowl of the pelvis, reproductive organs, hips, knees, thighs. <laughs> this you have a very short body. <laughs> your hips go to knees. Down to your shins, ankles and feet. Check in. Listening for any message we might find there. Stay in Shavasana for as long as you like. I'm going to bring my thumbs to my forehead, Anjali Mudra. 
Thank you for practicing with me today. And I will see you next time. Namaste.